You know, you can't have a good meeting unless you have a few hiccups, right? That shows that we're human. It shows how desperately we're dependent upon the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Please understand, I do not regard myself as being Jesus or the Holy Spirit, <laughs> despite Walter's uh, affirmation. What I do do every day is pray that I would decrease and that he would increase. And so if people see evidence of God within my life, the presence of Jesus and of the Holy Spirit, then I rejoice because hopefully that means I am decreasing and he is increasing. Well, I'm Keith Boyette, in case you don't know who I am, and I'm president of the Wesleyan Covenant Association. <laughs> Thank you. What a joy uh, to those of you who are watching in uh, simulcast sites on live stream, those of you here at Frazier, what a joy it is to gather with you. You know, when we last did a global gathering in Tulsa, we were close to 3,000 people in all of those different venues. Based upon the registrations that we had coming into this morning, we were approaching 2,300, 2,400 registrations. I'm confident that when we get the final report, it'll be more than that. I think that's a remarkable testament in the midst of pandemic recovery, as it were, to be there. And so thank you for your support and engagement. One of the hardest seasons in life, I think, is that season of waiting for the birth of a baby. I've done it three times with three children. And I've added four more times with grandchildren waiting for them. Now, I'm, I'm not entitled to any special recognition for that. I mean, I did none of the work <laughs> associated with that. The nurses told me that my title was coach. I think that was to make me feel good about my presence in the room because I don't think my wife appreciated or needed my coaching at all <laughs> in that time. Labor and delivery often do not go by the book. There can be unexpected delays, changes in circumstances, moments of uncertainty, but eventually, one way or another, the moment arrives and the baby is born. Oh my, the joy and elation of that moment, all that hard work, all that pain, that has gone before suddenly seems to evaporate as this new life comes into the world and you hold your own flesh and blood knowing that this is a gift from God. Waiting is filled with frustration and discouragement, anxiety, a desire to make things happen. What strategies have you used to try to make a baby come when you are tired of that long wait? Birth is filled with joy, victory, new vision. As the psalmist declares, weeping may last through the night, but oh my, my, joy comes in the morning. The psalmist continues, you have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that I may sing praises to you and not be silent, O oh Lord my God. I will give you thanks forever. That's from Psalm 30. Well, you and I are awaiting a birth. The name has been revealed, the Global Methodist Church. We already know a lot about this church. We eagerly await the moment of birth when it is legally formed and begins to operate. But we're not there yet. And that is frustrating and discouraging more than a few of us are impatient, amen? amen. <laughs> Some of us want to force the issue, amen? <laughs> Deliver that baby, perhaps before the right moment. Maybe we should do a C-section and just rip the baby out, make that delivery happen. I mean, that's the human way to do things, correct? We'll take control. We've been waiting this delivery for months even years, the Hebrews waited 400 years for deliverance from servitude in Egypt. 
They wandered 40 years in the wilderness before they could cross the Jordan to the promised land. And God's people were in exile for 70 years before they were permitted to return to their homeland in Israel. Our wait has been long, but compared to those, well, not so long. Still, I'm tired of waiting. What about you? I'm impatient. I get anxious. I'm discouraged at times. But I have learned that God does amazing work when we are waiting, if we trust him and allow him to work. If delivery had occurred sooner, would we have been ready? Well, what choice would we have when the baby comes? You can't say it's not convenient yet. You have to be ready to move ahead, and we would have been. But God is at work in this season, and if there's one thing I have learned in my lifetime, it is to trust the timing of God. I have seen over and over again, his timing is perfect. His ways are mysterious. I don't always understand them. But in retrospect, I always see his wisdom. I want to thank thousands of people around the world who have worked to prepare for the launch of the Global Methodist Church. All those persons who have served on the Global Council of the Wesleyan Covenant Association, delegates to our global legislative assemblies, so many people who have served as officers and board members of our regional chapters, hundreds of people who have given of themselves to serve on our task forces, Countless intercessors, including those who are praying for us even now, partners in ministry who have joined us in this journey, and most recently the members of the Transitional Leadership Council who have met weekly for more than a year preparing to usher this new baby into the world. And so many of you who have generously given of your time, your resources, your prayers, to sustain this work and to ensure the startup resources will be there when we begin operations. I want to thank those who have had to pay the price of facing opposition and who even have had to sacrifice in order to stand for the vision of this new denomination. I'm grateful for the Reverend Dr. Jody Ray who is here with us today. Jody, if you would stand up. Jody was arbitrarily and capriciously removed from the position of senior pastor at Mount Bethel United Methodist Church by Bishop Sue Hopper Johnson. She is now under complaint for having failed to fulfill the mandatory responsibility of consulting with him in Mount Bethel. I'm also grateful for the Reverend J. Liu, pastor of Valley Korean United Methodist Church in Grenada Hills, California, who was with us over the last three days but had to leave right before lunch today so he could return to be with his people tomorrow. He was informed that he would not be reappointed to Valley K Korean because, quote, he undermined the ministry of the bishop, close quote, by sharing information about the protocol for reconciliation and grace through separation. And because he told people about what their options would be once the implementing legislation is adopted. Do you hear the spirit that is in the United Methodist Church? It is not a spirit of freedom. It's not a spirit that is making way for the Lord to work. It's a spirit of control and manipulation and deception, and it will not stand. The purpose of the protocol was to demonstrate to the world that we Methodists, despite significant conflict, could love one another as we part ways, blessing one another in our separation. God sent us a Jewish lawyer to show us the way in Ken Feinberg. And we have the humility to listen to what God is doing 
through even a Jewish lawyer. Unfortunately, recent events have undercut the environment of the protocol. I urge persons of goodwill to join me in continuing to pursue the goals and objectives embodied in the protocol. Our stepping out into a new day is not dependent on the adoption of the protocol, but it is the best way for most churches to address the future if they're going to be part of the Global Methodist Church. Launching the Global Methodist Church does not free churches from their present entanglement. The protocol implementing legislation justly permits churches to align with the Global Methodist Church with all their buildings, property, and assets without paying significant sums of money. This is the fair, the right, indeed the Christian approach to resolving the impasse. <laughs> Leading bishop, centrist, and progressives acknowledge this critical point when they endorse the protocol and committed to work for its adoption. The announcement of the impending birth of the Global Methodist Church is a moment of great hope for Methodists worldwide. Committed to the historic Christian faith and the Wesleyan tradition, the Global Methodist Church will unashamedly proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Our unity will be in the person of Jesus, not in an institution. We are single-minded in our mission. We dare to proclaim what our forefather John Wesley proclaimed, that God des desires to transform our character so that we increasingly reflect the character of Jesus. With Wesley, we are prepared to become more vile for the privilege of sharing Christ and him crucified with people of every nation, tribe, and tongue and especially with the poor, the outcast, and the marginalized. We desire to be a truly global church that enables the strengths in one region of the church to be shared across the church in every part of the world so that we all mutually benefit. Rather than being a church dominated by being US-centric, we expect to be a church that experiences the rich diversity of leadership and vision that rises up from all corners of our connection. We see our connection being rooted and grounded in the great confessions of faith as so eloquently expressed in the sermons of John Wesley. I believe we are on the cusp of a great theological revival. Rather than, being, rather than being fractured in what we believe and what we practice, we will humbly submit to Christ and to live in obedience with the teachings that he affirmed from the Old and New Testaments. I suspect most of you have heard the oft-quoted words of Mr. Wesley spoken as he looked forward to our generation. Mr. Wesley said, I am not afraid that the people call, called Methodists should ever cease to exist in either Europe or America. But I am afraid lest they should exist as a dead sect, having the form of religion without the power. And this undoubtedly will be the case unless they hold fast to both the doctrine, the spirit, and the discipline with which they first set out. As we launch into this new future that God has for the people called Methodist, we will not settle for the form of religion. We will press on to experience the fullness of the, of the power of God that he promises to his church. We will hold fast to the doctrines that has been, have been entrusted to us by those who have faithfully delivered the faith to our generation. We will know nothing but the Holy Spirit which God has poured out upon his people, seeking always to be filled to overflowing. And we will be a church that adheres to God's discipline as we seek to be a fitting dwelling place for him as he draws near to us and draws people to himself. We will live in what some have referred to as an already not yet season between the first coming of Jesus as Savior and his second coming, when the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God and King. In a similar vein, we are in another already not yet season, 
we can be Methodist of the Global Methodist Church in anticipation of its launch in the very near future. We can live out its doctrine. We can embody its mission and vision. We can keep our eyes focused on where God is calling us. We can be the church God is calling us to be here and now, regardless of what the powers and principalities of this world dare to say. I conclude with another compelling and well-known quote from John Wesley. Uh, this is our call. Mr. Wells Wesley declared in the phrasing of the 18th century, give me 100 men who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God, and I care not whether they be clergymen or laymen, they alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven upon the earth. What say you? Will you be counted among these women and men, whether clergy or laity, who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God? What say you? Will you choose? Will you choose to be part of a generation who by the power of God working within us will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven upon the earth? What say you? Join me and let's go global.